Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, the premier source for Second Amendment news, and today we are going to begin episode three, or part three, of the uh, Freedom Trail series. Of course, it's in Boston, Massachusetts, and I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you haven't seen the first two videos, I strongly recommend you go to those first. I'll have that playlist linked down below. It'll also be floating above in the cards, because uh, this is a two and a half mile journey, and it's important for you to see some of the stuff in the previous versions, or the pre previous parts, as they come up later uh, during this uh, Freedom Trail and in the history that plays along. So here we go, part three of the Freedom Trail. Let me know what you think down below, and uh, I'll see you at the end. All right, guys, so the next stop on the Freedom Trail, uh, right around the corner from King's Chapel and the burial ground, is the original site of the Boston Latin School. Now this mosaic that's on the sidewalk as well as uh, a statue of Benjamin Franklin, which I'll show you here in a second, marks the uh, original location of the, or the old original schoolhouse. Now the Boston Latin School was founded in uh, 1635 and the school has produced four Harvard University presidents, four Massachusetts governors, five signers of the Declaration of Independence to include Benjamin Franklin, Samuel Adams, John Hancock, Robert Treat Payne, and William Hooper. Of that five, only four of those graduated, and the school's best known dropouts, if that's a claim to fame, are uh, Benjamin Franklin and Louis Farrakhan. Now the school, while it doesn't operate here in this original location, still operates today in the Fenway section of Boston. Literally uh, inches away from this mosaic is uh, Old City Hall. Now, Old City Hall was the actual city hall from 1865 to 1969. And in the courtyard, you can see here is that statue of Benjamin Franklin I mentioned moments ago. Now, I just wanted to show you this because it's a beautiful uh, building here in Boston. If you know anything about the current Boston City Hall, it is one of the ugliest buildings in the Commonwealth, if not all of the land is just disgusting. And right there in the background of this uh, courtyard, you can see is King's Chapel, which we uh, mentioned and discussed in the last episode. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Another thing that catches a lot of people's eyes in this courtyard here of old uh, city hall is this uh, jackass and these footprints. Now the jackass is there. That's obviously the donkey, the sign of the uh, the Democrats. The other thing they have here are the, uh, the the shoe prints here that have the elephants, obviously from the Republicans, in the shoe prints. So uh, if you stand here, you're in opposition to the donkey, and uh, I guess that's politics. Now the next stop along the Freedom Trail is the Old Corner Bookstore. Now it's obviously much different than it was back in the day, but this was constructed in 1718, and the Old Corner Bookstore is uh, Boston's oldest commercial building and was home to the 19th century publishing giant Tickner and Fields. You may have heard of them. Uh, they produced such American titles as Thoreau's Walden, Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter, Longfellow's Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, The Atlantic Monthly, including Ward House Battle Hymn of the Republic. Now, over its 300 years of existence, this building has been a residence to an apothecary, a cigar emporium, a tailor shop, and a pizza shop, but its place in American literary history uh, is what it's most famous for. And as we continue down the Freedom Trail, the next uh, landmark that we come to is the Old South Meeting House. Now, this building is one of the most famous in American history. The building was built in 1729 as a Puritan meeting house. And during the colonial period, some of the Old South's congregation included uh, Samuel Adams, William Otis, William Dawes, and Benjamin Franklin and his family. The Old South Meeting House was the largest building in colonial Boston, and this was the stage for some of the most dramatic events leading up to the American Revolution. Many protests happened at this building, uh, from protesting the imprisonment of sailors into the King's Navy, to protesting the Boston Massacre that happened in 1770. But probably the most important event that happened here took place on the evening of December 16, 1773. 5,000 angry colonists gathered inside the Old South Meeting House to protest a tax, and that was the controversial tea tax you may have heard of. After several attempts at compromise failed, Samuel Adams walked in and gave a signal that started the Boston Tea Party. The Sons of Liberty led the way to Griffin's Wharf, which is about three quarters of a mile from this location, and that's where they dumped 342 chests of tea into Boston Harbor. This is where the Boston Tea Party took place. It's where it started. So speaking of the Boston Tea Party, the next spot I'm going to bring you isn't actually on the uh, Freedom Trail in Boston. 
but it's very close to where we just were at the Old South Meeting House, and that is the Boston Tea Party Museum itself. Now, the Boston Tea Party Museum is something really cool to check out. It is expensive to go into. It's one of those buildings that uh, you, you pay to go into to experience, uh, but this is, this is actually a fun stop. Uh, it's You can toss tea into the harbor. It's kind of interactive. It's kind of fun. They have a replica of the Eleanor where you can toss the uh, chests of tea into the harbor. And on the inside is something I wanted to show you that's pretty interesting. Here is the last known surviving tea chest from the Boston Tea Party. Now, in addition to this Robinson half chest is this little trinket. This is a glass bottle containing actual tea from the Boston Tea Party. Now this tea is 247 years old and there are two origin stories of this tea and how it came to be. The first of it comes from the family of Thaddeus Mason Harris. As the myth goes, Harris gathered the tea which washed ashore from the Boston Tea Party on the beaches of Dorchester uh, and then his family bottled the tea and passed it on through generations. The second myth says that the tea was shaken out of a Boston Tea Party participant's boots when he returned home from the protest. You can choose which one you believe, but either way, uh, this is on loan to the Boston Tea Party and Ships Museum from the Old North Church, which you will see later on here on the Freedom Trail in Boston. All right, everybody, that's the end of part three. I hope you are enjoying this mass amount of uh, history. All of these sites you can learn more about online. Uh, if I told you all of the stuff about all these sites, we, this would be a very, very long video. Um, I hope you're enjoying this all. There will be a part four coming shortly. So if you want to stay up to date with that, you want to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and uh, thumbs up the video if you liked it and share it with some folks who would enjoy knowing our real history. Uh, that you don't learn about much anymore. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.